Peace and everyone, my name is Trey McVell and this is the movie pie for Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Yeah. Welcome, my fellow fans of film. Go ahead and settle in as we about to dive into really actually my most anticipated movie of 2016, Batman v Superman. Now, you've seen it in the title. You read it in the description. This will be filled with spoilers. So I'm going to tell you right now as a warning, there will be spoilers in this conversation. Now, before we dive into the movie pie, let me just uh, make a couple of things clear. Here it is, guys. I am a huge comic book fan. Specifically, I am a Batman fan. I grew up reading the comics. I grew up watching the animated movies and, of course, the live action movies. And when Warner Brothers announced that they were going to be, for the first time ever, lighting up on a big screen together, Batman and Superman. But not only that, but they were going to be fighting Oh, this was awesome news for a comic book fan like me. So when I say my most anticipated movie of 2016, you got me. It's probably my most anticipated movie of the past two decades. Uh, so I was very, very excited. And I'm sure most of you, a lot of you are probably really excited to see this movie. So um, we're going to get on with the movie review. But hey, here's the deal, guys. I this movie pie will be for the theatrical version of Batman v Superman. I know a lot of you may be wanting me to do the ultimate edition, but you know what? I got to be fair. Every movie pie is of the theatrical version. So this will be for the theatrical version. The movie that everyone saw in theaters. This is the movie that the studio put out. So because of that, in my view, I look at this as the official movie. <laughs> and so the movie pie will be of the theatrical version. So if you if you guys are, you know, judging um, my, uh, you know, the points I make uh, based on, hey, man, you know, they actually did, uh, you know, touch this up or they did, you know, do this better here with the Ultimate Edition. Well, now you have your answer. It's because it is, in fact, the theatrical version. And, um, you know, so, hey, what is this movie about? So basically it is uh, setting up about two years after the events of Man of Steel and fearing the actions of Superman um, that they are left unchecked. Batman decides that he wants to take on the Man of Steel. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, I guess you should say in the background, you got the world wrestling, uh, you know, with what kind of hero they need, basically trying to see if superman is a bad guy is he bad for the world or is he good for the world and that's kind of the backdrop and so yes uh, i said it earlier but yes there will be spoilers uh, like all other movie pies this thing will be uh this will be a detailed review if you will a breakdown and the breakdown is of what hey the breakdown is this is that we're going to be talking about the screenplay we're going to talk about all of the slices and, uh, and and that right after the screenplay, that would be the performances. Then you got the visuals then the audio. Then we go into the direction and then we'll break down the experience. Hey, what was the experience like? Quick round of trays, tweaks, and then we'll dive into the final score of this movie. So without further ado, let's roll on to the first slice of this movie pie. And that would be the screenplay. The words that come to mind when I think about the screenplay of Batman v Superman are lazy writing. 
So overall, I did not like the screenplay. <laughs> I mean, I had uh, I had quite a few problems with the screenplay, to be honest with you, uh, which was a huge letdown considering how I just mentioned how this was my most anticipated movie of 2016. But I got to be honest and I got to lay it out. But there were a few good things that I liked about the screenplay. Let me go ahead and list those real quick. The first thing that I liked about the screenplay was that, hey, I love the basic premise. I thought the basic premise, the idea of it at least, is a really good idea. It's like, man, there was a lot of destruction caused in Man of Steel. And so it's a really cool idea to take that as your backdrop to say, or rather your setup, to say, hey, look, these are the reasons why the world is terrified of Superman. And these are the reasons why Batman would be concerned about Superman. So I love the idea of that premise being uh, the basic setup for why Batman would be uh, going up against Superman. The other thing that I liked is, hey, look, I thought they did a fine job crafting the society uh, to be, uh, you know, basically, you know, for and against Superman, like the, the backdrop of, you know, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? I thought they did a good job crafting um, that background. Like it felt pretty good. It was good writing, actually. Um, and it felt pretty realistic as far as, you know, the people that will be for him and then the people that will be against him. The other thing I like, continuing with the world they started in Man of Steel, hey, one of my concerns were was that, hey, is this going to feel like the same world that they created in Man of Steel? Uh, and I, I quite enjoyed the movie Man of Steel personally. And I wondered, I said, hey, look, this is going to be in the same continuity so it has to feel like, a, uh, you know, the world is the same. And it did, folks. Like it was it, it felt like it was the same world. It was written like it was the same world. Um, and I, I really like that because I like the world that was created in Man of Steel. It's a pretty cool world. Um, and the last thing I, I would mention about the things that I liked about the screenplay is, hey, look, folks, I was glad that they gave us a definitive winner between Batman v, and, and Batman and Superman. Going into this movie, I did not think that they would actually give us a definitive winner. And of course, that definitive winner was Batman in this movie. But yeah, I thought I honestly thought that they were going to give us a bit of a cop out. So that was pretty cool. And, and those are, you know, the things that I liked about the screenplay pretty much end right there. Because, folks, the rest of it was total trash. I mean, I <laughs> listen, I had two gigantic problems with the screenplay and there's some brackets within those uh within each of those two problems and the first problem being the characters now when i say the characters a lot of people get confused because i am not referring to the performances uh as done by the actors and actresses we'll get into that a little bit later that slice comes next right now i'm talking about the characters meaning as they have been written not the performances. And I had at least one problem with each of the main characters in this movie. Let's start with Lex Luthor. First, let me say that I didn't really have a problem with Lex Luthor's personality, per se. I thought it was fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. Would I have preferred the traditional Lex Luthor, the calm, cool, and collected, calculated um, businessman uh, who's also a genius, uh, yeah, I would have preferred that, but you know what? I, I didn't. I can't complain because I'm I'm all right with the version that they give us. So that's the, the, his personality is not the problem that I had. The problem that I had was his intelligence. I felt like he was OP in the arena of intelligence. I, I felt like he was forced intelligent. And let me tell you what I mean. You know, the screenplay doesn't lay out why or, knew, you know, why or how he knew certain things. Like he suddenly just knew Batman's identity. It doesn't really lay out how he knew Batman's identity. And then he also knew Superman's identity. You know, you know, just out of nowhere, he just he knows the identity of Superman and he knows the identity of Batman. He also knew what the kryptonite was and where he should look for it. And he knew what to do when he got to the Kryptonian ship. 
he just suddenly knew that oh man maybe I should you know slice you know my my hand and and make it make it make myself bleed and stuff it just there was no connection or any kind of exposition that explained how he arrived to the conclusions that he arrived to and it just it really took me out of the movie over and over and over again because it it felt again like lazy writing it felt like they did not have a way to explain why this character the you know this antagonist was intelligent as he needed they just it, it felt like it seems like okay yeah we need the antagonist to be really super crazy intelligent so uh you know he can be a good foil for superman but they didn't actually do the work to um you know draw out how intelligent he was and and, and the connection as to why he was intelligent and that was a huge problem. But you know what? My The biggest problem I have with the fact that he was intelligent was actually this. His intelligence took away from the other characters. And his intelligence took away from the people of the world itself. And let me tell you what I mean. You see, it wasn't Batman who discovered the members of the Justice League. It was Lex Luthor who discovered that. It was Lex who discovered the identity of Bruce Wayne and it, you know of Batman and it was Lex who discovered the identity of Superman. It was Lex who discovered the kryptonite. It was Lex who discovered you know all of these things. And you find that it was Lex who actually was behind Batman having a problem with Superman. You find that it was Lex who was behind Superman having a problem with Batman. Like literally, you find that Lex was quote behind everything in the doggone movie. And it just you know for me it took away from the actions of the other characters. And here's the other thing. When I say that it took away from the intelligence of the people of the world, let me tell you what I mean. Apparently, Lex Luthor was setting up all of these, uh, uh, you know, attacks and things to make the world hate Superman further. Uh, let me tell you something, folks. Knock, knock. Superman doesn't use guns. If he was going to kill somebody, you know, that scene that they have, you know, in Africa or whatever they was, like, it made no sense that people would just suddenly believe that Superman used guns. Like it, it, it felt like, you know, <laughs> it felt like the, the screenwriters was just, you know, thinking that the audience was stupid, that we were just going to buy into the fact that, you know, we would also believe that Superman were behind, uh, you know, the, the mass shooting in that area and in a few, in all, in all of the other incidents that, you know, the world turned against Superman, like the bomb in the courthouse. Like, really? Like, you know, everybody thought Superman did that? Like, you know, it just, it, it, it felt like lazy writing. It didn't seem like that they had enough to show us how intelligent Lex Luthor was without making everybody else feel dumb and making everybody else feel less intelligent. And, and, and honestly, that's my main you know, problem. And, and I'm going to go through the rest of my problems with the screenplay and you'll see how Lex Luthor's intelligence or forced intelligence is like a needle in a thread through the entire reason why I can't stand this doggone screenplay, which leads me to the next problem uh, of, you know, as far as the character that I have a problem with, and that's Batman slash Bruce Wayne. Now, again, when I say Batman, Bruce Wayne, I'm not talking about the performance of Ben Affleck, I'm talking about the character of Batman slash Bruce Wayne as he has been written. And here's the reality, folks. He wasn't nearly as intelligent or capable as he needed to be. Now, I know usually, and here's the thing, my rule is, is when I'm reviewing movies, even though I'm a comic book fan, when I'm reviewing comic book movies, I leave the comic books out of it. I judge the movie based on the movie itself. Because I fully understand that a, a comic book has to be adapted, you know, to the screenplay. I get that. I totally get that. But when I'm judging and I say that, you know, and because, and yes, we know in the comics, Batman is an extremely intelligent character. I mean, he's the world's greatest detective, you know, and so we get that. But that's not what I mean when I say that he wasn't as intelligent as he need to be as comparing him to the Batman in the comics. I'm comparing him to the Batman as he should have been in this movie. Because here's the thing. In this movie, you're trying to convince me that Batman slash Bruce Wayne has business standing alongside the great Wonder Woman and the great Superman. And by the time you get to the end of the movie, I did not believe that 
I didn't believe that they would trust teaming up with him. I mean, this is a guy who was a vigilante, for goodness sake, for most of this movie. And not to mention, when you look at Batman, hey, let's go back to Lex Luthor. Here's the reason why I felt like Batman was nowhere near as intelligent as he needed to be. Every single thing that Batman discovered, he discovered through the work of Lex Luthor. I mean, he didn't discover anything on his own that was original. Think about it. He did not discover the kryptonite. He did not discover the members of the Justice League, although it would have made sense for a character like Batman to be searching for the Justice League. Because think about it. In Man of Steel, it wasn't just Superman who was a, a superpowered alien being that was discovered. It was Zod and his whole crew. So it would make sense that an intelligent Bruce Wayne slash Batman would believe that if these beings are out there, that there potentially were other superpower beings out there who were a threat to the human race or, you know, and, and so he was, he would have been searching for him to see if he can take them down and, and see if they were working with Superman or potentially to recruit him to take, you know, go against Superman. Either way, it makes so much sense. And it would have been totally believable that a Batman, instead of brooding for the past two years and you know, beating the criminal race. And, you know, it would have made sense that Batman slash Bruce Wayne would have been actively looking for other possibilities that other power beings like Superman is out there. It just made no sense that they gave us the Bruce Wayne that they gave us. Yes, he was retired, but guess what? You know, that whole discovery of the Man of Steel brought him out of retirement. And so it would have made sense that he would, would have been searching for the other members of the Justice League. Nope. But instead, you have to have overly intelligent Lex Luthor be the one to discover it. And, the, and Batman, you know, uh, steal you know, the information from Lex Luthor's servers. But guess what? Batman didn't even steal that information because if you saw the movie, you see that Wonder Woman stole that information. And then Batman didn't even steal information from her. He, she gave it back to him by putting it in his car. And so suddenly I'm st still looking through the movie. I'm saying, man, what did Batman discover on his own that was original with him? He didn't discover um, Superman's identity, even though he, you know, as Bruce Wayne, he had a conversation with him. He didn't discover his identity. He didn't discover the kryptonite. He just stole the kryptonite from Lex Luthor. And Lex Luthor was the one who discovered and he was the one who found and brought home the kryptonite. And so here's the thing with the forced intelligence of Lex Luthor, with you telling me that he's behind everything, that whole scene where, Le where Batman steals the kryptonite from Lex, which, by the way, we didn't even get a chance to see, you know, that whole scene where he stole the kryptonite from Lex Luthor, it, to me, it diminishes that scene because, because you told me that Lex Luthor was trying to get Batman to go up against Superman, I'm inclined to believe that Lex Luthor wanted Batman to steal that kryptonite. So, you know, again, these are, you know, several little reasons why it just, it really, take. and then here's the thing, like, it felt like Batman was just easily duped. You know, you see that scene where, you know, an explosion goes off and, you know, we you know as far as the courthouse and then you see that scene where Bruce Wayne is, you know, you know, clenching his fist and super upset. It's like, dude, why are you upset at Superman? I mean, the intelligent Batman would understand that that was an explosion. They had nothing to do with Superman's abilities. And I felt like that it would have made so much more sense that if they were going to try to have the world blame Superman for multiple different attacks, there would be attacks that would emulate Superman's abilities rather than these regular, normal... <laughs> you know, uh, regular human um, weapons and attacks. And, and, and the fact that Batman buys into it, again, reinforces the fact that it feels like he was unintelligent as the character. And, and, and this is, and here's the thing, you know, Batman was pretty much the main character of this movie. Let's be honest, folks. He was pretty much the main character of this movie. And, and as the main character, but, you know, that scene where, Batman is making the kryptonite into these awesome weapons. That was an awesome scene, by the way. But you know what? I wasn't as emotionally connected to that scene because, well, Batman wasn't the one who found the kryptonite. He just stole it from Lex Luthor. And then even further, I wasn't 
emotionally attached to that scene because we didn't even see him steal the dog on kryptonite <laughs> so so you know it would have made such a much a much more emotional impact on the audience if we had saw him steal the kryptonite or we had saw him better yet searching for and found the kryptonite and in, in, in the, the moment that he is making this kryptonite to this awesome weapon or these awesome weapons man it just would have you know been more impactful and so that diminishes the capabilities of 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 batman and the other thing that diminishes the capabilities of batman is you know batman is you know he's you know he's a man of you know of of fear as in he strikes fear in you he doesn't get fear struck in him and i felt like they did such a such an intentional job at humanizing batman that you know there are moments in this movie where he flinched multiple times uh, particularly when he was fighting against superman and i get it superman is a superpower being but you know he's also batman though you know so it just it, it seemed very Again, I'm not trying to compare him to the Batman in the comics, but what I am comparing him to is someone who has business standing alongside of Wonder Woman and Superman. And it just did not feel, by the time they teamed up, it did not feel like he belonged with them. At least from the context of the movie. Now, I know he's Batman. And, and as far as the character, if, you know, from the comics, of course he belongs side Wonder Woman and Superman. I mean, that's the trinity of the comics. That's awesome. But this is not not from the context of this movie. It didn't feel that way, at least not to me. And so that was one of my problems. And the other problem that I had about Batman is, you know, yes, Batman in the comics don't kill people. I get that. But I had no problem with Batman getting a little gritty. I didn't have a problem with him killing people. But what I did have a problem with was the fact that they didn't acknowledge that he was killing people. Yeah, sure, you had, you know, a couple of vague conversations between him and Alfred, but there was no direct acknowledgement that he was straight killing people. And if you saw the movie, he he did not have any uh, 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 concern for the criminal race. <laughs> he was just straight blowing people up, you know. And so, you know, that was, you know, some of the problems that I had about Batman. And here's the thing. I had also a problem with Superman slash Clark Kent. You know, first of all, they, you know, it was a lot of, it was weak to little dialogue that they gave uh, Superman. Unlike Man of Steel, and I get it that Man of Steel was, of course, predominantly about Man of Steel. It was super, it was a Superman movie. So I get that they had a lot more dialogue for him here. But hey, look, this movie is called Batman v Superman. It, you know, it's not a Batman movie, although it, it's written like, like it's majority of a Batman movie. And um, and they didn't really give him a lot of dialogue to work with. And so that was a huge problem with that particular character because it, it made me disconnect from him. And so, you know, I had a problem with that personally. And, 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 may, and maybe part of that is intentional. But either way, it did not um, read uh, the way I, you know, at least to the enjoyment factor that I felt like that they that I needed from a Batman v Superman movie. And then here's the other problem that I had with him. You know, Superman easily abandoned his own moral code for the sake of Lois by deciding to work with Batman. I mean, if you remember the movie, this is the man who, you know, was so upset with Batman that he was the one who approached Batman. I mean, this dude, you know, he let criminals escape so he can confront the bat and telling him the bat is dead. And that if the next time, you know, your bat signal goes into the sky, don't answer it. Because he had a problem with Batman trumping on the civil liberties of Gotham. And so, you know, it was from Clark Kent's and Superman's morality that he had a problem with Batman. And all of a sudden, Lois is in danger and his mom is in danger. And, you know, like you get all of these different things and it's just like, oh, OK, now I need to convince him to help me. And it just felt it it, it made for such a weak character. And Superman is not a weak character. Superman is an awesome character. But this movie made Superman a weak character within that moment that he would just completely forego and, and, and not address um, the fact that, you know, he had a problem with Batman, you know. Um, and so, you know, that that was, you know, two of the problems that I had with Superman and Lois Lane. You know, I've always loved Lois Lane as a character. But in this movie... 
she was a damsel in distress. I mean, by my count, like at least three times she had to be saved by Superman. First time was in the beginning of the movie. Second time, time when Lex Luthor throw her off the building. And the third time was after the Batman v Superman fight, you know, that awesome fight. You know, she takes the kryptonite spear, looks around for what to do with it. Then she throws the kryptonite spear to some water for who knows why reason. Then two to three scenes later, she dives back into that water to go get that same kryptonite spear that she just threw in there, only to be trapped so that she can be saved by Superman yet again. Lazy writing. I mean, it was ridiculous. And, and here's the thing. They just simply made her a giant plot device in this movie. Because in the end of the day, when you saw Superman sacrifice himself, well, they needed Lois to be there so that she, so that he can motivate, uh, so she can motivate him to go sacrifice himself to take out Doomsday. In the end of the day, before Bruce, Batman was about to kill Superman, they needed Lois to be there so that in the end of the day, she could make sure that, you know, um, Batman doesn't kill Superman. You know, when, when Lex Luthor needed to get Superman's attention, in the end of the day, he used Lois. I mean, it's just, she was just a giant plot device. And it, it felt like, man, what, where's her own character, you know, storyline? Lois is an awesome character. She doesn't need to be a plot device. And so, you know, that was the problem that I had with, uh, you know, with Lois Lane. And that leads me to, you know, hey, here's my second main problem. With the screenplay, and that is the plot. The first problem, main huge problem was the characters. I went down that list. The second huge problem was the plot. There are four issues that I have with the plot of this movie. Let me repeat, you know, here's the IMDB uh, plot summary. Fearing the actions of Bat, uh, uh, fearing the actions of Superman are left unchecked. Wait, hold on, let me pause right there. What actions of Superman exactly? What actions of Superman are you talking about? You mean the fact that he's going around saving people? Like, seriously, the execution of this basic plot point is completely stupid because what actions that what actions that Superman have need to be un, you know <laughs> you know need to be checked? He's doing heroic deeds, and the only deeds that is seemingly uh, Superman's fault are the deeds that are you know which it, it's ridiculous that anybody believes that it's Superman doing. It makes no sense. The, the execution and the writing of what is actually believed by the general public and by the supposedly intelligent Batman to be Superman's actions is completely ridiculous. And personally, it took me out of the movie. And so, you know, and that, that's one of my huge problems with it. And then here's the thing, you know, all of the actions, you know, um, you know, blamed. And like I said, I already said that it's, it's, uh, made for a horrible, um, you know, as far as, you know, Batman falling along and made it seem like Lex Luthor was dangling some cheese and Batman is just, you know, eating every bite, you know, along the way. Um, but, you know, here's the thing, you know, speaking of Lex, you know, leading into my second problem is the second part of that synopsis. So after it says fearing the actions of Superman are left unchecked, Batman takes on the Man of Steel. Wait, hold on a second. You know, think of the concept of the movie, which I said was awesome. Batman deciding to take on the Man of Steel. This normal human being decided to take an on to take on this superpower being being Superman. But when Batman is so easily duped, it kind of takes away from the actions. <laughs> Like it, you know, to me, it felt like he was easily duped by Lex Luthor, not just on the Superman front, but also with the fact that, you know, Batman was sending, you know, uh, you know, these checks from the survivors of the attack, you know, that happened to Man of Steel. You know, Bruce Wayne didn't even know what was going on in his own doggone company. He didn't even know that, you know, the checks were being returned. It just felt so ridiculous. Like, wow, dude, you're so easily duped, you know? And so that took away from the actions. And here's the thing. Also, according to the movie, Lex Luthor was the one who was behind the scenes nudging Batman toward that fight. So for me, it, it diminishes the actions of Batman. It, it takes away from the fact that this normal human being is going up against the Man of Steel himself. When I find out that a quote unquote super intelligent guy is the reason that he's going up against that Man of Steel. 
Like it would have been so much better if Batman on his own with all with natural courses decided that he wanted to take on Superman. But it diminishes that actions for me. You know, you find that it was Lex Luthor behind the scenes nudging, you know, Superman going up against Batman. And here's the thing. I mentioned that earlier, but that leads me to my next thing, folks. It wasn't just Batman that had a problem with Superman, people. Superman had a problem with Batman. Like I said, he had a problem with the fact that he felt like Batman was a vigilante. He was trampling on the civil liberties of people of Gotham. And, you know, here's the thing. Clark Kent, he had begun his investigation on Batman, which is an amazing character, you know, um, storyline. It gave a lot of character development for Clark Kent. That's awesome. And here's the thing. You guessed it. Lex Luthor was the one planting seeds uh, within Clark Kent's investigation. But the movie just completely cut the doggone investigation. We don't see anything else that led through the investigation. You know, not only did Superman drop the investigation, but he suddenly wanted to work with Batman because of what? Lex? Like, because Lex was behind everything? Well, because Lex, you know, kidnapped his mom and because what... Lex Luthor had nothing to do with the problems that you had with Batman. It wasn't Lex Luthor that was going around brutally beating people and branding people and killing people. That was Batman. It was Batman who was the vigilante. Like that was the core problem that you Superman had with Batman was that he was a vigilante. Finding out that Lex was quote behind everything doesn't suddenly change the problem that you had with Batman. It doesn't suddenly reverse the fact that Batman was going around killing people, which was the problem that you had with Batman. It, it's just it lazy writing. They could have wrote, wrote more moments between Batman and Superman, between Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne that made it more believable that Superman would turn, uh, would, would change his mind, it would turn his opinion. But as they've written in the movie, there was nothing that made it any, that made any sense that, Superman would go from, I have to, you know, hey, the bat is dead. Don't answer the call when your sign shows up again to, I got to go convince him to help me. I have to convince him to help me. Why? Like, what did Batman do that made you, one, trust him, two, believe that he could help you? Like, other than the movie needed to have you do that, what in the script happened that made you actually change your mind? The answer is nothing, folks. Here's the fourth major issue that I had, the Martha scene. Now, here's the thing. I actually thought the Martha scene, the actual concept and the premise of it was, it was perfectly fine because I understand what they were going for. They were trying to say, you know, Batman who saw Superman as this, you know, non-human being that finding out that he not only had a mom, but had the same name as his mom really uh, struck a chord with him. It, 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 it hit close to home that this guy has people that actually care about him. And I totally understand that. And I got that even in the first viewing that I had in this movie. I totally get that. So my problem is not necessarily with the Martha scene at all. I actually liked the concept of where they were going for, but I believe the execution was horrible. And, and, and one of the main reasons why the execution was horrible is the writing of that scene was not um, preceded by anything that actually made sense as far as Batman going from wanting to kill Superman to saying, I'm a friend of your sons. I'm the best friend of Superman. You see, I told, I, look, I was slightly by that finding out that Superman has somebody that care about him, that he has the same name as your mom. I get that. I was slightly by that that will be enough to convince Batman to stop wanting to kill Superman. But to suddenly have Batman go from that to like being the best buddies with Superman just felt so unrealistic and unbelievable. It made absolutely no sense. And I felt like, honestly, I felt like the main reason is because there was no scene written in this movie that you know, kind of helped us see the ideolo ideology, blah, the ideologies of both Batman and Superman that help us to kind of understand where the two was coming from and, um, and it kind of build on their relationship. So by the time you get to that scene, there's only been one scene in the real world 
that the two of them had came across as Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent and only one scene in the real world that the two of them came across as Batman and Superman. So the, it, there was giant gaps between the two even meeting. So it didn't really feel like there was any impact. So when he says, hey, I'm going to go, you know, you know, he's saving, you know, Martha saying, hey, I'm a friend of your son's. Like, it just felt cheesy. <laughs> like, it was like, what? You, you don't, dude, you were just about to kill him less than an hour ago. You know, less than 30 minutes ago. And so it just felt completely cheesy. Um, and and it, it honestly, it just felt like lazy writing. Like I said, lazy writing. Lazy writing all the way around. And one last thing about that scene. Here's the thing, guys. No one in that situation would actually say the name of their mom in that situation. If you think about it, the entire scene hinges on the fact that Superman says the name of his mom being Martha. Usually, well, not usually, it makes no sense why anybody would say, save Martha. You would say, save my mom or my mom's in danger. You wouldn't say, save Martha. Like that, that makes no sense. Again, like I said, lazy writing all the way around. It felt like they did not have another way to get that across or they didn't speak take the time to think of other ways to actually write that scene better. Um, but, you know, every time I saw the movie, it just took me out of the movie even further. It's like, really, roll my eyes, guys. No one would say save and name your mom. Um, that was just really cheesy. But anyway, I know I've gone so long on this slice of the pie, but seriously, I had so many major issues with the screenplay. But um what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree on any of the points? Um, do you guys have some other gripes that you have with the screenplay? Maybe you guys really love the screenplay. Uh, either way, comment in the section below. I really want to hear your thoughts. Uh, in the meantime, right now, I'm going to go ahead and give this slice a score and a verdict. And for this slice, the screenplay, it gets 31% of 25 points. And that means it's a bad slice. Now let's move on to the next slice of this movie pie, and that would be the performances. Overall, I really, really like the performances in this movie. And I'll start with this one, Henry Cavill. I thought he did a really good job as Superman, um, although, you know, he did not show the range of emotions that I was hoping and expecting to see uh, just from what I, you know, saw in Man of Steel. And I, I don't mean to continue to compare this to the Man of Steel, but it was directed by the same person. So um, and it's in the same universe. So it's kind of like, you know, my expectation was coming off of what I saw in the previous movie. Um, so this movie directly follows Man of Steel. So, you know, I'm looking for continuity. And so, yeah, I, I, I was, you know, expecting a little bit more out of Henry Cavill, um, you know, and uh, yeah, it, it, I just did not get the range of emotions. Like he, he showed really deep emotions. Like when he was angry, he was really angry. Uh, when he was sad, he was really sad. And he was pretty much sorrow. <laughs> he had a sorrowful face throughout this entire movie. Um, but you know, I didn't see a, a enough joy and, you know, again, it, I, you know, I don't blame the tone of this movie personally, but, um, yeah, you know, I just, you know, could have done with a little bit more range, um, from him, Amy Adams as Lois Lane. I have always enjoyed Amy Adams as Lois Lane. I think she did a great job, uh, you know, just with her performance. Like I believed her to be Lois Lane. And that's what you want me to do. Like, I, I, you know, her as a character never, you know, took me out of the movie. Unlike the next guy, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg as Les Luthor. Yes, man. He took me out of the movie several times, like throughout the movie. <laughs> you know, he was all right. But, you know, I felt as though he overacted in some scenes. And overall, I think Jesse Eisenberg is actually a really good actor. But for this movie in this role, I, I felt like he overacted some scenes. Like, I, like you know, for example... You know, the whole twitchy quirk, you know, thingy, the <laughs> or whatever you call it, that he had with Lex Luthor. I was perfectly fine with that, but I just felt like it needed to be a little bit more subtle in a lot of time, a lot of times, and that he kind of overdid it a little bit more. 
Um, and that took me out of it. Um, you know, so again, you know, just talking about the performance uh, that Jesse Eisenberg gave, you know, I felt like it could have been reeled in a little bit more. Uh, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, you know, hey, you know, she was one of my major concerns going into this movie. And I have to say, I, I am amazed that uh, she did a pretty good job. You know, like, you know, she did an all right job, I would say, for the sample side that she gave us as Wonder Woman. You know, we, we, we saw uh, a, a range of emotions from her, but, you know, neither of those emotions felt deep enough. Um, I, I didn't feel like connected to her when she was emoting. Um, but it was some pretty good emotions. Like, you know, not a, one of the scenes that I really liked, a lot of people seem to uh, not have known about it, but that scene where Lex Luthor is talking about, you know, the Greek, you know, Greek mythology, um, Wonder Woman like rolls her eyes uh, for a brief scene. And that was pretty cool. Uh, and if you know Wonder Woman, of course, she's connected to Greek mythology. So it's kind of cool that she kind of rolled her eyes at that. Um, and uh, the other thing is, too, um, you know, that moment where she's fighting Doomsday and, you know, she gets knocked back and then she smiles, you know, because, you know, Wonder Woman, of course, loved the battle. Like, that was pretty cool, too. I, I thought Gal Gadot did a good job emoting with that. But um, so that's pretty good. The supporting cast, you got Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. Holly Hunter, Senator Finch, she did a great job. Um, you know, Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Wow. He was my favorite Alfred, uh, you know, right after... Uh, I would say um, the uh, Christian Bale Batman's Alfred, uh, Michael Keaton. I think it's, no, not Michael Keaton, Michael Caine. <laughs> uh, right after Michael Caine, I, I like Jeremy Irons, Alfred. Diane Lane, uh, of course, did a great job as Martha Kent. I loved her and Man of Steel, loved her in this. Um, I have to say Scott McNary. I like Scott McNary, but in this movie, uh, I, I think his character is Wall Wallace Keefe or Keefe or whatever. I just kind of felt like with the performance he gave, he was a little bit out of touch with the movie, in my opinion, overall. Like, I just felt like, uh, you know, dude, it, it didn't, maybe a little bit of overacting, but nevertheless, it just didn't feel like it was in place. Uh, the performance felt a little bit off for me, but uh, nevertheless, you know, he's there. But of course, guys, the one to watch for was Ben Affleck's Batman slash Bruce Wayne. Oh my word. He was amazing. Unbelievable. I mean, folks, he in his performance carried me throughout this entire movie. I mean, oh my word. Now, I know I went crazy on the character of Batman, but that was just the character as he was written. But when you talk about Ben Affleck's performance as Batman, it's a very different story. I thought that he emoted perfectly. He gave me the range of emotions that I wanted to see, and he gave me the depth of emotions that I wanted to see, the subtle expressions in his face, everything about the way Ben Affleck carried himself screamed Batman to me. Now, I find every conversation that I have about Batman in this movie, when I talk about the how much I hate the character of Batman in this movie, what I find is that um, every, at least everybody that I've talked to so far um, you know, they mainly like Ben Affleck playing Batman uh, more than they like the written character of Batman himself. In fact, I myself, though, I really, you know, I thought I liked the character of Batman when I saw this movie. But then after thinking about it, I realized, you know what, if I separate the character from the performance, not so much. If I separate the character of Batman from the performance, I realized that I actually the reason why I like Batman in this movie is because of Ben Affleck. It's not at all because of the actual, you know, character written uh, of ba the writing of the character of Batman. I, I you know, uh, you know, and, and, and every time I have a conversation with people, they tend to end up thinking the same way that I do. And they start thinking about, wait a second. Yeah, actually, it was just Batman's performance. But, you know, maybe that's not everybody. Um, you know, but I, I loved his performance. In fact, his performance is so good. I got to give this slice an extra bonus point. Uh, but tell me guys, tell me what do you think? Now, I said, uh, that's every conversation that I've had, but what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Ben Affleck as a character, um, was also really written really good? Do you like it? Um, do you agree with me that you think that his performance, um, uh, Ben Affleck's performance greatly outweighs the writing of the character of Batman 
Um, and what do you think about the performances overall? Um, you know, was I a little bit too harsh on it? Comment on the section down below. Um, and while you do that, hey, guess what? It's time for me to go ahead and give this slice a score and a verdict. And for this slice, the performances, it gets 78% of 20 points plus an extra bonus point. And that means that it is a good slice. Now it's time to move on to the third slice of this movie pie, and that would be the visuals. Oh, wow. Of course, folks, they were amazing. Yes, it's Zack Snyder. What do you expect? Everybody knows, listen, Zack Snyder is one of the visual kings in the industry. When it comes to the visual, this guy has got the visual juice. And of course, those visuals was laced throughout this movie. I mean, the choreography was amazing throughout the entire film. In particular, I love that scene where Superman is saving Super Batman is saving Superman's mom. Oh my word, I could have I could have used more of that. That desert scene was so beautiful. It's amazing where Batman was fighting the parademons. Give me more of that, folks. Like it was spectacular. The cinematography was spectacular. I, I really love, uh, especially this, the desert scene I was just talking about. It was awesome. You know, I thought the lighting and the coloring, uh, it was beautiful. Uh, you know, the atmospheric shots overall, I thought was really good. You know, the fight with Doomsday, you know, all of the fights is definitely the fights between uh, the fight between Batman and Superman, you know, with the smoke and, you know, the kryptonite smoke. Everything was just gorgeous. It was awesome. However, I will say that there was a huge hiccup. Uh, actually, it was several hiccups, but there's one that stand out the most that was very, very disappointing to me. And here's the thing. Do you remember that scene after Superman and Doomsday got nuked? And the camera, you know, you know, kind of shows Superman's face as he's hovering over the earth out, you know, in outer space. Um, if you look at that scene, I mean, the look, the visual effects were unfinished. It looked horrible. Like I'm talking about worse than video games, you know, visual effects, worse than television video visual effects. I was I was like, man, and here's the thing. It was a big deal because it's just how big you know, this movie is, this is a big budget movie. The fact that, you know, Warner Brothers and, and yes, and even Zack Snyder would let that go through. It just, it was ridiculous. And I saw it, you know, like, you know, uh, DVDs and Hey, go back. Next time you see the movie, go back and watch that scene again. The, the visuals were unfinished, uh, in Superman's face. Uh, it was just horrible. And it really took me out of the movie for the next scene, actually. Um, but Hey, something noteworthy I want to say is I actually really liked doomsday the way he looked a lot of people complained about it you know yes yeah, because he looked like a turtle <laughs> and i agree he did look like a turtle but you know if you notice doomsday kind of uh, evolved and you know of course those of us who know doomsday you know what doesn't kill him makes him stronger like he's constantly evolving if you saw from the beginning of when doomsday were first uh born until the very last end when superman killed him um and I say killed him with air quotes, of course. Um, you know, Doomsday, he looked, by the time he was, you know, by the time the end of the movie, he looked closer to the Doomsday that we all know in the comics. So I like the concept that, you know, you have the turtle Doomsday, and uh, the more he got attacked, he just kept evolving into, you know, more and more of the Doomsday that we will come to know. So I actually like that. But anyway, what did you guys think about the visuals? Uh, did you catch that? Um, scene that I also caught, you know, when Superman got nuked, and there was a couple other scenes, uh, in like particularly with the Doomsday fight, that you know the the visuals didn't look that good. But other than that, I like the visuals. But what did you guys think about the visuals? Comment in the section below. Let me know your thoughts. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this slice of the pie a score and a verdict. And for this slice, the visuals it gets 82% of five points. That means it is a great slice. Now it's time to move on to the next slice of this movie pie, and that would be the audio. 
overall, I was very impressed with the music of this movie. Oh boy. I loved all <laughs> loved all of the music of this movie, particularly the score, all of the themes. The Wonder Woman theme, and of course, I, I Hans Zimmer, you know, you did it again. I mean, I love the Superman thing from, you know, continued on from Man of Steel. But, you know, so I already knew that I was going to love that. But the Wonder Woman slash Dust Justice League thing, I, I, you know, you know, whatever. Look, I won't do it justice, but you guys know what I'm talking about. That, that, that music carried me throughout the movie. I mean, I just absolutely ate it up so i loved all of the themes and i love the sound effects the sound effects of batman's vehicles the sound effects when batman was breaking people <laughs> it was fantastic it felt realistic and it felt invigorating um the gravity machine at the beginning of this movie of course being the same thing that was in man of steel i absolutely love that sound effect it's such a unique original sound effect you know that you know that you know that sound effect i'm talking about um i loved it um i absolutely loved that um the audio overall was just just fantastic you know the, the only little blip that i would say is that you know the sound balance was great but there were a couple of scenes uh particularly during the doomsday fight where it protect it would go from one scene to the next and then it would go from really loud to really low um, but it was almost unnoticeable, so I can't really, you know, knock it too much. But overall, it was awesome, you know. Uh, anyway, what did you guys think about the music? I mean, this made me wanting to go out and get the soundtrack, folks. Like, it was awesome. I absolutely adored uh, the soundtrack, the score, everything about this, uh, the audio in this uh, movie. I, I pretty much just uh, uh, adored. Uh, comment in the section below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, particularly about that Wonder Woman's uh, music. Do you think it's even better than the Man of Steel theme? Comment in the section below. Let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and give this slice, the audio, a score and a verdict. And for the audio, this slice, it gets a 95% of five points. And that means it is an excellent slice. Now it's time to move on to the next slice of this movie pie, and that would be the direction. Oh, Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder. You know, the thing about you, Zack, is that you get so caught up in the visuals that sometimes you forget about storytelling. If the screenplay suffered from lazy writing, then... The direction suffered from sloppy directing. And oh my goodness, the direction was all over the place, Zach. Let me tell you what I mean. There are four th really main things that I want to discuss to elaborate. The first thing is this. Your slow motion directing, it was eye rolling and frustrating at some points. I mean, you got slow motion of people walking, slow motion of people looking at flowers. You got slow motion of people's head turning. Slow motion, everything. You know, Zach, everything doesn't need to be in slow motion. Seriously, like the first seven to ten movie minutes of this movie is basic slow motion. It's just ridiculous. So that was dragging on in the movie. But here's the second thing that I can't stand about the direction you've done in this movie, and that's the editing was disjointed. Things did not flow, Zach. An example of that was, you know, there's a scene where Bruce Wayne is staring at the bat suit uh, while the bat suit was in his case, and it looks stunning. But it made no sense within the context of the story regarding the previous scene and the following scene. It made no sense. I mean, literally, the very next scene was a scene. I'm not even sure if the very next scene had anything to do with Batman. But certainly the very next scene, it wasn't like the next scene was, you know, Batman or Bruce Wayne going out in a bat suit you know, doing some stuff, which is what would make sense if you give me a scene with him staring at the bat suit. It just felt so out of place. I don't understand why you had that there. The third thing about your direction, Zach, is this. Some of the scenes within this movie just didn't make sense at all as far as the editing go. 
you know, that scene where Superman is hovering, you know, uh, you know, in a house, you know, you know, that part where, the, you know, he got the houses got caught on flood and, you know, he's just kind of hovering there and people are reaching up to be saved by him. It it made no sense whatsoever to show us that scene. We never actually even get to see Superman save anybody, you know, and so that wasn't the point of the scene. And I know that's not the point of the scene because the point of the scene was to get a cool shot. And I admit, hey, it looked really cool, but it actually made no sense within the context of the story. I feel as though, Zach, you direct this, you directed this movie like by, basically by saying, let me get this cool shot. Let's get this cool shot. Have, let's have this cool shot. Even if the shot has no business within the narrative of the movie, if it, if it, it, it makes no sense within the context of the movie. Zach, I feel like you set up this movie by a series of cool shots as if the things in between doesn't matter as much. And it certainly doesn't seem like the narrative and exposition, the character motivations were on your priority list, man. Like they were all secondary to the great shots that you saw that you had to have for this film, no matter what. And the fourth thing is this, man. Overall, even though you had some exciting things happen in this movie, you had me bored for much of it. I mean, oh my goodness. There, there were parts that I enjoyed and I wanted more of. I already mentioned that, that scene where Batman is fighting those you know, guys, just you know, handling them like they were children. The part where he went to go save Superman's mom. I already mentioned how amazing that was. And I loved it. And I loved it for the visuals, yes, but I also loved it because I knew what the heck was going on in that scene. And that scene fit the narrative of the story that was being told. That's the reason why I was drawn into that scene, Zach. And, you know, all of this added to the visual goodness that you showed. On the other hand, and unfortunately what I'm about to say is the majority of, you know, that lace throughout this movie that scene where Batman was fighting in the desert against the parademons. This was also an amazing scene, as I mentioned before. It was amazing. I loved it. It was beautiful. And the choreography was amazing. However, it took me the second viewing to find out that it wasn't even like a dream sequence, that it was some kind of vision in which Flash was warning Batman of a possible future. You know, Zach, that's cool, but it wasn't clear. Cool and clear are like brothers. Zach, don't separate them. You know, you've proven that you can give me the coolness, but Zach, you have to understand that directing is more than just the visuals. In fact, the entire scene, that whole scene, not only wasn't clear, but it wasn't even necessary. It was completely unimportant to the present story. Think about it, guys. If, if you take away that sequence... It literally does nothing to the story. Things will happen exactly the way that they happen in the movie if you completely remove that entire sequence. It, again, that entire sequence made no sense. Honestly, Zach, if you remove, let's put it like this. If you cut back on all of the slow motion crap and cut out all of the scenes that don't fit the narrative, I bet you would probably find a lot more time to develop Batman and Superman better and that relationship better. Like, you know, like the stuff I was talking about earlier, you could have had a lot more time to develop that relationship. So that way we get the emotional impact that we need when certain things happen. But you didn't. Anyway, that this is what I feel when I think about this slice of the pie. Maybe I'm a little bit too harsh on Zach. You know, and, and maybe it's because I did. I really enjoyed the work he did in Man of Steel. So I, perhaps I was expecting a little bit more. However... Uh, it is what it is. This is what I thought. And this is this. These are the true feelings I had about the direction of this movie. Comment on the section below. You guys tell me, did you feel the same way I did? Maybe you guys felt worse than I did. <laughs> Maybe you guys felt a lot better about the direction of this movie. Comment and let me know below. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and give this slice a score and a verdict. And for this slice of the direction, it gets 37 percent of 20 points. And that means it is a bad slice. Now it's time to move on to the next slice of this movie pie. And that is 
the experience. Now, I saw this movie twice in the theater. The first time, I absolutely hated it. I literally went back again because I couldn't believe that this movie, which was my most anticipated movie, uh, was as bad as I thought. And, you know, I will admit that I did enjoy a, a lot more the second viewing. You know, as a comic book fan, there is inherent entertainment value I got from this movie, especially since Batman is my favorite character, uh, one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. So, you know, I couldn't help but enjoy, you know, certain aspects of this movie. I could, you know, I could have used a little bit of longer of a Batman Superman fight, but what I got was absolutely amazing. It was awesome. I wanted more of it, but it was awesome. The reason I wanted more of it was because it was awesome. I really enjoyed the doomsday fight too, you know, between Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. How amazing of that was that fight that the three got a chance to fight together. Um, and so I, you know, I, I definitely wanted to see more of that. And here's the thing. I thought the way that they handled the Superman slash Clark Kent funeral was really, really good. It was very poetic actually, where you have, you know, Lois Lane and, you know, um, uh, Superman, Clark Kent's people burying Clark Kent, and then you have the world uh, giving a funeral for Superman. I thought that was handled really well. However, I was taken out of the movie far too many times to enjoy this movie nearly as much as I should have. Even though I enjoyed it much more the second viewing, I realized that it was mainly because I knew when to brace myself for the really boring parts, and I knew <laughs> I knew to hold on. Uh, and hold uh, hold out for the exciting parts. Like that's really, if I'm honest, probably why I enjoyed the second viewing a lot more. I had high hopes, uh, so many high hopes for uh, in my in my level. That means that my level of expectation was really high for this film. But unfortunately, it was not met. It was met only with a low level of enjoyment. In fact, uh, you know, the, the uh, I am a fanatic overall. You know, like I said, a comic book fan. But as a comic book fan, I almost fell asleep during a Batman v Superman live action movie. That's pretty telling of how bored I was watching this movie. Like, how in the world does that happen? And some people say that the tone of the movie was off. I actually thought the tone was perfect. I thought it was perfectly fine. I actually enjoyed the tone of the movie. But I personally felt like the content within the movie, um, you know, it, it just... It did not, uh, it was, it left me feeling crummy and uninspired. And that was the experience that I had uh, in this movie. Even the second time, both times, I still felt crummy and uninspired. You know, I felt like I kind of got robbed, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, I've been anticipating this movie for so long and it felt like, wow, like this is, that was it? Like, and I literally said that, I was like, oh, wow, that's it? Even though the movie was super long, I felt like, oh, that's it? That's all we got? So anyway, that was my experience uh, watching this movie. You know, uh, I would say overall it was slightly more good than bad, but still uh, definitely nowhere near where it should have been as a dramatic comic book fan and uh, Superman and Batman fan. But what was your experience? Uh, what was the experience that you had watching this movie? Were you inspired? Were you uninspired? Were you motivated? Um, where you moved emotionally. I wasn't really moved emotionally like whatsoever throughout this movie, to be honest. Um, but what about you guys? Comment on the section below. Let me know what do you think. And I'm going to go ahead and give this slice a score and a verdict. And for this slice, the experience, it gets 58% of 25 points, meaning it is a mediocre slice. All right, now, before we go ahead into the final slice, we're gonna go through Trey's tweaks for a second here. And here are the rules, just a refresher. The Trey's tweaks is I'm gonna uh, talk about up to three things that I would change that would have increased the score uh, in a verdict overall of this movie pie. And I'm gonna start with this. The first, I have three things here. The first thing is that I would have added at least two scenes one scene extra with Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent and another scene extra with Batman and Superman in this movie. 
And um, and I feel like that could have helped to make Batman's turn a lot more believable. Just a scene where Batman had a chance to dialogue with Clark Kent, to dialogue with Superman, just a little bit more than a couple of words. That way he could have understood Superman a little bit more and connected with him a little bit more. So by the time you get to the end of the movie, if it, it would have felt a lot more believable that he would not only you know, turn from not killing Superman, but then go from, you know, not killing Superman to becoming his friend. Because again, I, the way the Trace tweak works, I'm not trying to change the core concept of the movie. I'm just trying to in, tweak the movie to enhance it. And so they, they wanted this movie to um, end with the Martha scene. And they wanted this movie to end with Batman and Superman being friends. I get that. Well, if you want them to be friends, you need a little bit more conversation and dialogue between the two. So I would have added those scenes, a scene between Batman and Superman and another scene between Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. Again, I'm talking about additional scenes. I'm not saying as if they didn't have that at all. The second tweak I would make is this. Make Batman more capable and intelligent overall. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, two of the ways that you could have done this is that you could have had him discover the kryptonite on his own. I already touched up on it a little bit earlier, but listen. If you have your main character seeking out to achieve a specific goal and to have that main character achieve that goal is so much more emotionally satisfying than to say, oh, this villain did it and he just stole it from the villain and we don't even get a chance to see the doggone theft. It, it's completely ridiculous. Um, so I would have absolutely had from the beginning of the movie that Batman himself has been searching for the kryptonite for the past year or so uh, and that he actually found the kryptonite on his own. Uh, and, and this doesn't say that Lex Luthor couldn't have known about the kryptonite, but just that Batman was the one to discover it. And, uh, and the other thing is, hey, you know, it would have made sense. It would have been completely believable that Batman would have also been searching for other superpower beings besides Superman. An intelligent Batman who sees Superman and Zod and his whole crew would suddenly believe that there are other superpower beings prob probably on this earth. He should probably seek out, maybe for help or maybe to go against them too, to see maybe if they're a threat as well. All I'm saying is that it just felt really unrealistic for a character like Batman to sit on his loins and just, you know, you know, take his anger out on the criminal race. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, so overall, however you would have do it, I would have increased the capability and the intelligence of Batman more. The third tweak is this. I would have added a scene to show Superman learning about Batman's history as a crime fighter. And, you know, in that in that scene, uh, you know, proving that Batman could be trusted. Uh, some kind of scene that made Clark Kent prove that Batman possibly could be trusted. Um, and that Batman just simply lost his way over the years. This could have helped, of course, with Superman's turn uh, and make that more believable. Um, so those are the tweaks that I have. You know, jump in the comment section. Do you guys have any tweaks that you would make uh, to this particular movie? Uh, let me know. Just keep in mind that we're not trying to overwrite the entire vision that Warner Brothers had. Uh, just s tweaks that would have increase your enjoyment of this film that's the way it works all right folks let's do this let's uh dive into the slice recap to determine what is the movie pie uh for this particular movie um you know as we started off with the screenplay if you remember we said that it was a bad slice and it earned 7.8 points. The performances, we said that it was a good slice and it earned 16.6 .6 points. The visuals, we said it was a great slice earning 4.1 points. The audio, we said it was an excellent slice and it earned 4.8 points. The direction, we said it was a bad slice and it earned 7.4 points. And the experience, we said it was a mediocre slice and it earned 14.5 points. If you add all of that up, you get 55 points. Out of 100 points, that is 55%. But what does that mean for Batman v Superman? 
Dawn of Justice? Let's find out. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is a mediocre movie. So if this movie was a pie, it would be somewhat servable. And there it is, folks, the movie pie for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. It definitely reflects the feeling that I have is that it's somewhat servable. It's a mediocre movie. Uh, it's not a horrible or terrible movie. It's not even a bad movie, but uh, which is what I thought the very first time I saw it. But then I had to reflect and realize, you know what? This movie is actually nowhere near as bad as I thought it was. But certainly I was hoping for so much more. Um, please give a you guys have got a comment with me if you were feeling the same way I did. I really wanted this movie to be knocked out of the park. Um, you know, I certainly wanted it to be uh, at least a good movie. And I was hoping for a great movie at least and, uh, at most. And so uh, the fact that it was mediocre for me, um, it was, you know, it was just a huge disappointment. Now, of course, uh, you know, this is only my opinion, guys. Your opinion is welcome and is no better or worse than mine. And my opinion is no better or worse than yours. We're film fans, guys. Let's comment on the section below. Let's get some discussion going on this movie what do you guys think do you agree do you think that it's a mediocre movie maybe some of you did think that it was a you know terrible movie an awful movie maybe some of you thought it was a great movie comment and let me know what your thoughts feel free to discuss and i'll jump in there with you um, but let's wrap up here here's the posing question for this episode here you go guys here's a fun one for you would you rather see superman go up against thor or Batman go up against Wolverine. Now, these are the movie versions only. The movie version of Superman, like as in like the DCEU version and the Marvel, uh, the Fox version of Wolverine going up against DCEU Batman. Let me know. Poll is up and I want to get your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for sticking it out with this movie pie. I am so pumped and excited. Um, definitely, if you haven't uh, subscribed, feel free to subscribe if you like. Uh, this content uh, we're producing more movie pies on a regular basis guys and so uh, until next time until the next slice of the pie peace out